We have a church to go back. You know what I'm doing? The Lord days God got prepared. They're in a the mold. They're in a the mold. They're in a the whole place. Oh, come on, somebody. God has not seen it. Because God is saying, you're going to go different. You're going to walk different. You're going to talk different. You're going to act different. You're going to feel the power of God. It's time for the power of God. And I began reading at one. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Verse 4, again he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto the bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay a seal upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shake. And the bones came together, bones in this bone. And when I beheld, lo, the seed, when the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Verse 9 reads, Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these flames, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great form. Next, I'll be reading from Psalms 107, 19 to 20. 
Psalm 107, we'd like to hear 20. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distress. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Again, it says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Some synonyms for restoration are known as repair, fix, amend, rehabilitation, recondition, redevelop, reestablish, return, and restitution. And that is what the Lord wants to do for us. He wants to restore us, not just our outer, but our innermost parts. And so we've all assembled with one purpose in this place, and that God be glorified and we be restored. Amen. So tonight, God is going to hear a broken soul's cry. Some are broken than others, but all in need of touch. From broken to bind, heal, feel, refill, seal, renew minds. We're going to encounter the restorer of our soul. God is going to reintroduce some people. And when we add it all up, we'll get God's divine plan to fulfill this purpose of our expectations, if our expectations are in Christ. And so. We didn't come to glorify flesh. We didn't come to preach anybody has, but we come to God and we glorify him, that we may get what it is that he has for us. So if we come expecting a show, then we'll leave him just as we can. And so praise the Lord, God, 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 that he sent his word. He's the great I am, that they were healed, that you are healed. And so I'm just a message on the sign. And I'm believing that the word tonight going to pierce someone's soul, yes. and we'll come in divine alignment with God's purpose, with his will, and right now as I speak, I pray that you be receptive of the word of God, and so God is restoring marriages, he's restoring friendships, he's restoring faith, joy, purity, God's restoration point is restoring trust, family restoration is taking place, but most of all, spiritual restoration, we hide up our spiritual man, our spirit man, with the out, add more things from the flesh, more habits, more hobbies, busy in ourselves. When all the only thing that we need to do is look deep within and see the real condition of our hearts and the real condition of our souls and allow God to clean us up, cleanse us. Because adding a new pocketbook, new nail polish, the next engagement is not going to cleanse us up and it's not going to kill us. It's just going to smash our problems. Right. 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 So, masculine right. thing is not going to kill us. And if you've ever pulled a roll back and you see dust under there, mm-hmm. around the edge, you really can't see it, but when you pull it back, it's a mountain. Mm-hmm. And that's what our inner man looks like when we don't clean it up. We don't allow God to clean it up. But how do we get clean? We have to run to the cross. We have to run back to the cross. We have to allow him to clean it up. We have to have our minds to do the word. And it does no good to just go to one new service. Mm-hmm. And it's supposed to carry us over to the next week. This should be a daily thing. We're supposed to pray without Jesus. Continually throughout the day. That the word in yes. our heart and on my lips give praise to God. Yes. 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 And so I pray that you receive in Jesus' name. And for those that were not able to come, just know that the word was sent. Mm. Amen. This word is not bound by time nor place. It is yes. sent. Okay. So for those that y'all are standing in, that are standing in need of prayer for others. That are intercess- intercessors for others, just know that the word is sent. So when your prayers go on their behalf, it's not limited to that place. They don't have to do what you do to send a prayer in the And so 1 Peter 5 tells us that after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you on the firm foundation. Yes. I'm tired of suffering. It goes through the same old, same old rise. I mean, yes. And it has to come to a point as to where. Enough is enough. And we can't just keep running to the next preacher, man. We have to run to the great I am. Yeah. So some have suffered for years, carrying generational curses, oh, things yeah. that they didn't even agree to. Oh, okay. But people from their past that yes. brought you and bound you in yes. But guess what? They're still in the restoration. Yeah. And the blood of Jesus can break all of those curses. Yeah. Those, yeah. Bonds, those contracts can be canceled Ooh, in the name yes. of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so how long must you circle this mountain? The Lord is saying you have promised this mountain long enough. Mm. Turn over. The mountain of fear, the mountain of peace, the mountain of defeat, the mountain of uncertainty. Yes. We have to turn over. What is normal? To Christ. Yes. And so John 14 and 1 admonishes us to not let your hearts be troubled. When things keep coming in us, we can't just say, 
lowest mid. Mm -hmm. That right there won't get it in the seat. We have to face those giants if they come running to us. We have to run right back to them instead of running from them. Because they'll continue to haunt you and yes. face them and to slay them. Right. And so Mark 11, 24 challenges us to exercise our faith and say, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Yes. So it's a yes. prayer. Not kid parties. You can't run from it. Be like, oh God, you know the condition of my heart. Yes. Okay, God knows, but do you know the condition of your heart? Do you know his heart? Do you know what it is that he wants for you? And how can you know unless you do it in prayer? Oh, yeah. Prayer is conversation with yeah. God. You have to have communion with him. Yes. And so knowing that our deliverance comes from prayer, then we must stay in a posture of prayer. Yielding through prayer, we can obtain what is truly our restoration. Yes, a nevertheless prayer. Even unto death prayer, mm. pray until it hurts, mm. pray through rejection, and then all by myself prayer. This way, you don't have anybody else. When you can't call nobody else, you can't get nobody else on the phone. Or whatever you go to their house and they don't answer the door, guess what? You're going to have to get to yourself sometimes and then pray, and pray all by yourself for yourself. And so, um, and all by your prayer stance is keeping your face before God that you may be restored. So Jeremiah 30 and 17 expresses God's heart toward us. It says, because you are called out, as God said, that he will restore you to help and heal your wounds. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. 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 Jeremiah 29 and 11 tells us that God knows, yes, life happens at times. But God didn't just throw our lives together. He had a plan. He planned it. The good, the bad, the ugly, and the indifferent. He says, for well, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Mm -hmm. Yes, I thank you. Yes. So if we take a look at Hosea 6 and 1, we'll see restoration after calamity. It says, come let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind us our wounds. A part of God's plan. And so every day in this Christian walk is a month of five roses. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't believe me, just keep this. Amen. But right when you think you're at your finally point, I know I'm probably going to come. That's why we must seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness, and all other things will be given to us. Amen. Seek, seek, and it's not just a one time thing. That's what we call, oh Lord, I need this. Oh Lord, I need this. Guess what we need to do? So we have to seek. And what is seek? Searching for, mm -hmm. looking for, not just looking for his hand, but looking for his heart. Amen. Amen. When you get up in the morning, it should be, oh God, bless this day for me. That I can get some baby say, oh no, God, what can I do for you? What would you have me to do? How can I please you today? Amen. So if we're in his will, guess what? He will bless us. He'll give us peace. He'll give us joy. He'll sustain us. But if we just looking for the next thing to increase us, yeah, you're going to be disappointed because it's not the will of God. Amen. The blessings of the Lord. Are for us to bless others. Mm -hmm. And they add no sorrow for us to try to work out in my own thing if they give me sorrow, it's not from the Lord anymore. Or because you're sorry, it's not necessarily that it's not from Him, but maybe it's not your time. Mm -hmm. And so time and purpose put together is a blessing. You can't go before God and try to work things out on your own. You can't lag like, behind them and think that they're going to work out. You have to walk with right. Him. Mm -hmm. You can't become my own God trying to work things out because He's not really passing them. He knows the time. Mm -hmm. And if you get something before it's your time, it's going to be a blessing, it'll be a curse to you, it'll be a burden. Mm -hmm. And so, Romans 5 and 13 tells us, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace if you trust in Him. Mm -hmm. Not any time I don't understand it, but trusting in Him, yeah. trusting His time. Yes. Trusting that what He has for you is for you, and it will be for you. Yes. Yes. So, as we make our plea before God, let us say, as David said, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. We have to be willing to do the work of God. We have to be willing to be content with Him and sustain His will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, distractions come all around, and distractions are to pull you out of the will of God, but you have to be willing to stay in His will, rejecting mm -hmm. those things that are not from Him. Those ladies know, those boys that ain't no good for us. Yeah, oh, they ain't look good, good. but you <laughs> ain't look good, ain't good. Amen. So we have to be willing to just take it out. You're going to give me a copy of the page. You're going to give me a copy of the page. Okay. <laughs> and 
And so Psalms 51 and 7 tells us, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. So we have to ask the Lord to wash our thoughts, wash our intents, wash our animal seeds, wash our desires. Even our eyes sometimes. Purge me, oh God. Yes, Lord. Those a million spirits, those in the past, purge me. Things that I think I didn't defeat it. Lord, let me know if they still there. First, you know, all the testing that they not saying I'm a trust. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm talking about. 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 I don't know what I'm Pick your praise up and know that God alone is the restorer of your soul. For he leads you the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And Jeremiah 17 and 14 tell us, let us cry out. We have cried as Jeremiah did. He said, heal me, Lord, and I'll be healed. Save me, and I'll be saved. Praise God. That's it. That's it. We can't save ourselves. Yes. It's only by the cross that we are saved. Yes. Right. By the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for us, we have to be accepted of that, receptive of his Slay on the cross. Okay, so praise God, praise the God. psalmist in the 71st Psalms offers encouragement to what we should declare. Though which has showed me great and sore troubles shall quicken me again and shall bring me up again from the depths of the earth. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. And so we let us know that our comfort comes from Christ. Even when it don't feel good, even when it don't look good, it still comes from Christ. Mm-hmm. That's right. It's the good and the bad. Come on, yes. somebody. And so no matter what comes, no matter what may, no matter where you are, where you find yourself at today, no matter what state that you find yourself in, whether you're broken or whether you're halfway weak, whether you're halfway, you know, off the rock over there, you got to be what's right where we get. Because Jesus, he heals, he feels, he sets free, and he delivers. The devil comes on to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus came. He said, I came. The enemy comes. It's a continual thing. But Christ he came once and for all. But we have to receive what he came with. That you may have life and have it abundantly. So restoration is real and it has no age given on. Restoration doesn't have a status. The only requirement for total restoration is submission to Christ and a surrendered heart. 2 Corinthians 5 17 tells us that if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. Mm-hmm. Old things have passed away. Old things yes. have passed away. Yes. Old mindsets. Yes. Old habits. Old bondages. Yes. Old bands of wickedness. Yes. But we have to receive Christ, but the night is going to disappear. And so, um, in closing, we're going to read about the promise of restoration. In Jeremiah chapter 33. I'm going to read verses 2 and 3, and then we're going to skip down to 6 through 12. Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 2 and 3, and then 6 through 12. So thus said the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it, to establish it, the Lord is his name. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. Skip it to 6. Behold, I will bring it health and cure, I will cure them, and I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. And I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity captivity of Israel to return, and I will build them as at the first. And I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, whereby they have sinned against me, and I will pardon all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned, and whereby they have transgressed against me. And it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise and an honor before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear all the good that I do unto them, and they shall fear and tremble before all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure unto them. Ten reads, Thus saith the Lord, Again there shall be heard in this place which he shall, which he say shall be desolated with man and without peace. Even in the city of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, that are desolated without man and without inhabitant and without beasts. Eleven reads the voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, Praise the Lord of hosts, 
For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. And of them they shall bring the sacrifice of praise in the into the house of the Lord. For I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first said the Lord. Twelve breeds. Thus said the Lord of hosts, again in this place, which is desolate without man and without beast, and in all the cities thereof shall be an inhabitant of shepherds causing their flocks to lie down. And so that right there is telling us the promises of the Lord. He will return you to the first, restore, heal, heal, as he originally Amen. intended before yes. sin entered in. Yes. yes. But because sin entered in, we had to have a part. And through that part, we could be healed. And restoration is for all. Amen. This is not a pumping and moving conference. This is a wisdom conference. This is an impartation. Get what you came to get. Trust me, when you go back home, and, and I'm very serious, you're going to feel something. Oh, y'all. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Yes, let's go. Oh, right. Yes, God. Good evening, everyone. My name is Wilson. I'm the prophet of Wilson Rice uh, of Western Georgia. And I will be moderating the rest of our speakers for this evening. But uh, let me just say this. Welcome to all of you all. I welcome you from all over the country, and I'm glad that you got here safely because, you know, one, you're here because you have to be. Amen. God's calling. Amen. There's a purpose. And God had this calling. Yes. You all were in mind, in God's mind. Okay. There were other people in God's mind. Remember, many are called from who you are. All right, now you got to it's just because we have prophets and apostles up here, it's your purpose in the body of Christ. Oh, because I got news for you. This is bigger than us. Oh. God is, is more than enough for this world. But unfortunately, it's a whole lot of people that you all don't know. And guess what? He calls his disciples to tell him about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, our Redeemer. There's a purpose and a focus for every last one of you all here. Okay, just because we have robes on, just because we are some people being ordained, does not mean that there's not a purpose for you. Because I'm gonna be honest with you, before this evening is out, everybody's going to receive something. Amen. That God needs for you to have. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Feel what I'm coming Amen. from. Amen. 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 Because all of us have a purpose. Amen. Amen. What I'm going to say, first of all, the prophets, uh, the apostles, the priests, I really appreciate what you said. Yes. I'm not going to say too much because you said a couple of my favorite sermons. I'm not going to preach right now, so <laughs> I can't say some stuff, but I'm going to be cool right now. I'm going to be cool. Yes. You know, this role would have me put up in here. Let's go. Leave it alone. First of all, first of all, I'm going to be honest with you. The only reason why I'm talking is because Apostle Betty Combs is the next speaker. And she's nervous right now. And I'm just coming out right now. But just being a little safe way. And for all my nerves, just to think I'm funny. Okay. I'm not like this. I'm not like this. Let's bring to the uh, front of the room this Apostle Betty Combs out of the Texas Tell you, um, you know, 
this is uh, the first time that I've, uh, you know, had the opportunity to do this um, with these beautiful women and men of God and uh, going through some, some things. Do you, do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Going through a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Yeah. And uh, so I just want to thank God because he's making a way where there seems to be no way. Yeah. And, you know, uh, as we were coming down here, you know, we, it just seemed like one minute after another. I was like, okay, I'm almost there. <laughs> okay, so. But, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the theme for this conference is restoration by the Praise sea. God. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And I just want to give God's glory because that the teachings and the learnings, if that's a word in the, you know, the grammar, uh, and <laughs> under Apostle Deanna Dixon and these beautiful women and men of God uh, doing the training under her. And I tell you, you know, uh, having this opportunity to be baptized and ordained through her and under her, and, and I know that God is the head of this. He's the anchor yes. of this ministry. And so I know that, that God is going to take us somewhere. And um, so uh, from journey to journey, as I grow in the Lord and experiencing things and going through things, the Lord has been restoring me. Praise God. And so, you know, oftentimes, you know, the thought of losing something or oftentimes thoughts of getting back what you lost. But the truth is not only getting back what you lost, but it's getting more than you lost. Amen. When something is restored, I'll just kind of give you a little bit of uh, restoration examples that, that the world has given me. When something is restored, it is worse and greater than it was when it was new. If you restore, which is my favorite, the 1967 Super Sport Camaro, it is worth more if you sell it today. But in 1967, you you probably paid about what two thousand dollars for it, but if you sold it today, restored, you got forty thousand dollars. <throat> Restoration is not only getting back what you lost, but it's getting back more than what you lost. Restoration is messy. It's very really messy. Have you ever seen a house being restored? Sometimes it's easier to build new instead of restoring. An old one, should I say. It will save you money, time, and heartache. That's the truth. Jesus. But there is something in restoring, something that once was. When you begin to strip away the paint off the walls and tear down the old uh, original wallpaper, you begin to see the original vision and the original intention that the architect had yes. when he made it. Amen. Then you are able to enjoy the beauty of that time. You are not only going to enjoy the beauty and the creativity, but also be able to add wealth, culture, and character to yourself. Amen. Amen. Anybody can live in a track <laughs> but it takes somebody to live in a Victorian home. It takes somebody that has culture, character, and you cannot buy it. You got to learn it. You got to learn it. You have to understand what the architect intended. When we begin the restoration process, it is the building of the new things. Now, you kind of Kind of go with me on this journey because I'm going somewhere. Keep in mind, we're talking about you, me, you and I. <clears throat> it's you when you begin the restoration process, it's the building of new things, creating or starting new things, new movements. True restoration is the process proceeding what God's original plan or his intention plan was. 
got to remind ourselves that he is the architect. He is the original architect. Amen. But by he is the architect of the universe. Amen. But by that, you know, we we are talking about, uh, let's see, what, what's that, uh, uh, the Empire State Building. Well, the rocks that were there, you know, it took somebody with a vision. It took somebody with a creative mind to build. The rocks didn't just lay there and build the Empire State Building on itself. Somebody had to have a vision to build it. And that's, you know, that's like us. We've got to have vision. So um, what I'm saying is, is the Empire State, uh, the Empire State Building was built. And uh, so, let's see. Okay, I kind of some here. Uh, who is, uh, okay, yes. In the end, you don't want me to say that. You don't want to hear this. He is the architect. One who is from the beginning to the end. The one that created all things. Yeah, that's right. He is the God that truly loves all humankind. And the God, the only God that truly loves us. Yes. He loves us so much that he did that he did not create us as a mere creatures. But he gave he gave it to us as he gave his own identity, his own image, his own likeness. He gave us his own genetic structure. Yeah. He gave us his attributes so we could share. Yeah. And that's, that's what the intent is. <clears throat> and he gave us the greatest gift. He gave us the greatest gift, the human will, the human will to decide, which is where the truth of God's divinity, that you have the choice to do what you want to do, do when you want to do it, whether it's good or bad, whether it's God or the devil, whether life or death, it's your choice. And in choosing, you are constantly acting like the nature of God. Amen. That's why the devil don't like you. That's why the devil does. He hates you. That's right. He can't stand you. I can't stand this. Is not, I just can't stand this. And I used to say it too, but I don't anymore. When I hear people say, when they give their lives to Christ, and, and they say, oh, the devil's really been fighting me. Ever since I gave my life to God, and I, I gave my life to Jesus, he's really been fighting me. That's a lie. He's been fighting you before. <laughs> he didn't start fighting you then. He's been fighting you. That's right. <clears throat> when you, when he hated you when you were in the world, that's right. when you were stomping and right. you know twerking and doing whatever, <laughs> you know, bearing his hand and sitting in his hand, and I, I know I can get you. <laughs> you got one in your mouth. Forgot you had that one. You got it. <laughs> You're still saying I need a cigarette. <laughs> but I don't understand why do people believe that the devil Jesus. loves them when they're when they're in the world? They really believe that the devil loves them, but he doesn't. And they think that that he will do anything for you. That's a lie too. He will destroy you. He will kill you. And he will destroy you again, and he will devour you because he hates you. You know why he hates you? Because of the image of God and everything that every and every time he looks at you, he sees the image of God. Jesus. Because he knows. Because remember, he gave us his attributes, his genetics, his identity. And I don't care. I don't care if you're all crap. I don't care if you're sleeping with someone that you're married, that you're not married to. Every time he looks at you, he can't stand to see the image of God. He hates you. He can't stand it. Like I said, it doesn't matter if you're sinning or not. You are in the world. It doesn't matter. He hates you then. He hates you now. That's right. That's right. 
He can never, he can never define the image of God. That's why God did that to, to really tick the devil off. <laughs> because he knew that if he left the image of God on his people, he knew that that would make him mad. And I really believe that that's why he did that. He left it that way. It's just, just saying. So the devil thinks, oh, you can make, you know, them a uh, uh, backside in the garden. No. <laughs> But God let them, God let us keep the image of God so we, so we can make Satan, so we can make Satan mad. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, regardless of what you do, you will never, doesn't matter what he does, he will never be able to strip mankind of what he has given you. Uh, we are, let's see, how uh, do I say this? Um, If we are made in the image of God, so to speak, now come, kind of go here with me. We are like windows, windows to another realm. We are made in His image or image of God. We are windows to a far more profound, and yet we settle for simplicity. And we are we are profound creatures made in the image of God. We settle for Sunday school service. We settle for uh, Sunday school definitions of God. The summation of our preaching always comes back to the ethics and morals. That's right, God. Because we are never able to progress to the spiritual realm. So, so we find ourselves as pastors, apostles, prophets, teachers. I will say this. <laughs> I was like, Lord, you don't want me to say this. We find ourselves, okay, so, we find ourselves as pastors, apostles, preachers, teachers, telling you, telling you to keep your pants down. Telling you to keep, I mean, I'm sorry, keep your pants up and your dress down. <laughs> we know. <laughs> You know, I always think of this too. We waste good conferences. Yes, we right. waste good preaching time. Yes, mm -hmm. good. Telling somebody, <laughs> telling you things that you already or you That's should right. already know. That's right. That's right. That's Paul says, I want to share spiritual things with you, but I can't because you're carnal. That's right. That's right. Jesus said, I have many things to share with you. But you're not able to bear them. I don't know who wrote the book of Hebrews. It was either Paul or Apollos. But for argument's sake, Paul, I'll just say. <laughs> but we're not sure. But uh, they, uh, but whoever wrote it, okay, they said, this is a time. This is just breaking down. This is a time that we should be teachers. But we have to teach you all over again. We have we shouldn't have to be feeding, we should be feeding others, is what we should be doing. Now we've got to go back to feeding the milk of God's word. Because you can't get past the outer man. Man is a trifold being. We are spiritual in body, but we are spirit first. And then body. That's right. Yet we neglect the spirit because we are on a mature right. to a place to yes. receive truth. Because we don't want the truth. Because if we get the truth, then we got to be held accountable. That's right. That's right. That's and right. the truth is, we don't want to grow up. It's a whole lot easier when Mama cuts your meat up for you, clothes you, pays your bills, clothes you, and you want to a whole lot of people are having to take care of you instead of having to grow up and be so responsible and feeling the weight of what it is to be a responsible adult. And then in the church, we neglect the spirit. Yet Jesus says, listen to the word of Christ. Okay, I'll talk about a farmer. When the farmer goes out and throws seeds three-fourths, of it, it gets destroyed, and one fourth of it falls to good ground. Hello, good ground. Hello, good ground. What next? What next? On good ground, some.
some will only produce 30 fold, some will only produce 60 fold, and some 100 fold. Yeah. It has surprises me that the one that produces 30 fold, they don't long for more. All right now. They, they're just happy. They just happy. They just want to be saved enough to get into heaven. All right now. Saved enough to just stay out of the pits of hell. All right. Rather than acknowledging that there is a deep yearning within you. And then they ignore the constant cry of the Spirit of God. I know, and this is the title of my sermon, and I never said it. I know there has got to be more. There has got to be more than what you've been called to. All right now. There is more to what we are experiencing and settling for what is what there's there's more. So people just coming to church, just doing the bare minimal of their obligation to get yeah. into heaven. There's more to just having, just living right. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's right. more to just yes. living right. Or, yeah. right. or just paying your bills. Amen. Right now. Paying your bills. <clears throat> and, uh, let's see. Uh, and, and, oh, and then this too. <laughs> you, you, you getting by with just a, a scripture once a week. You, you go to Bible study you, on Tuesday, you go to service on Sunday, you get your dance in once a week, you get your shout in once a week. <laughs> there is something on the inside of you that is filled with greatness, yet your spirit is perplexed because you are not acknowledging it. That's right. It is a yearning to be released. It is the divine essence in every one of us. It is the spark. Paul says that um, it is in the spirit of God that is within us. The Christ is in us. The hope of glory. The hope of greater dynamic and dimension of God. And yet we settle for less. <clears throat> Let's see. I ran out of paper, and I had to throw all this little paper and kind of put them out here. God will settle, I mean, uh, excuse me, we settle for, again, I was saying Sunday school definitions of God. The summation, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, here we are. Paul puts it this way, let's say. All right, listen, because <laughs> this this is this ain't gonna come easy. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. There can't be a high calling unless there's a lower calling. We have settled for lower callings rather than to press for the highest calling. We have settled enough for salvation and never the fullness of the kingdom. There's got to be more. There's got to be more than just Sunday services and Bible studies. And there's got to be more, and, and they're, they're just, uh, um, people are in the church and they're, they're preparing, uh, uh, developing new programs for to fill the needs of the people. Yeah. And, you know, just little stuff that, that, that they do. I think church is a little wrong. But we've got, to, we've got to do more than to just compete with a secular society. Yeah. We are spiritual beings. 
Yes. There is something within the church that is crying. Jesus. It's dormant. Yes. They're suffering. Amen. Yes. There is people that are saying, God, am I going to have a bad smile? Did I miss it? Is there something wrong with me? Why do I feel like I talk to everybody and I'm the only one and I'm the one that's crazy? Why do I feel like there is something wrong with me? Why is it when I talk to other Christians yes. about my longing for God and my desire for his face and my hunger and my prayer and longing and fasting in his presence and they want to go eat at Denny's and then they want to go gossip and talk about, about this and that. And, and they just belittle the presence of God. Amen. They just have an emotional Come on, Jesus. switch Come on. Right. that they can turn on and turn off. I'm almost done. Okay. And as soon as you get out of church, you can't even remember what the preacher said. Because you're hungry. And you don't worry about you need to be in that moonshot. You're worried about that one out. You can't worry about feeding your spirit. What the church has begun to sell to, we have, we have minimized the purpose and the plan of God, and we have settled for 30 folks, and we have lost the longing for God. And I don't think that we lost it. Some of us never have received My God. the true call. Oh, my God. God.
Jesus said. But men, to uh, they are the ones that are saved. Okay. One minute. Okay, yes. Uh, the, the, the young men and two you, young men because you're strong. You know, you 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 are you are learning and it's based on your knowledge with God. You're past the child state part. You fathers, because you have known me, as he said in his word from the beginning. Because when you were a child, you just you just dealt with the sin. But when you're a young man, you deal with the issues of strength based on the knowledge of God. But when you are a father, you know him, which is what we need. That's where we're headed. Amen. That is where we're headed. Okay, and um, Which is where we're headed. That's where we're, we need to where we need to go. But we can't define him because we gotta spend so we gotta spend at least thirty minutes defining you. We gotta tell you that you're a sinner. We gotta tell you that you're a wretch undone. You're unfit for the presence of God. You need to pray so you can stay. You need to fast so you can last. Be humble so you won't stumble. God says in the, inner, in the inner spirit is saying there's got to be more. Amen. We should be hanging on to every word of God in this presence, in this atmosphere, in this conference. We should be hanging on to every word as though he is speaking directly to you. Renew your mind. Rededicate. The reason that you are weak, you are because you just said for where you are. You can't. Ex you cannot experience what God has for you. It is. It is. It is good. It's His good pleasure to give us the kingdom, but He can't give it to us now because we are carnal again. Oh my God. To be filled, because we're so filled with gossip and evil and pride that it separates us from the presence of God, because we're not faithful, because God has has given us. And he so and he wants us to take us to the next level. And I know that it may seem kind of you know depressing or whatever, but it's the truth. So now that you know the truth, we've got to be held accountable. But the next level is realizing God. God, I thank you for what you've given to me. God, I thank you for what you have done. I thank you for what I have. It's not a one, two, three, one, five, six, A, B, C step. It's that simple. But we need to go to the next level so that God can restore us. Yes. Begin with your mind. You have it. It's, it's within you to be satisfied with God. When you say, God, I remain. God, don't leave me in this place. God, I need your anointing. I need your beauty. God, take me as I am. I, I forgive you, God, for all of my sins. God, let there be healing in my life and in my families. But I'm going to close with this. Is that all he wants, and he wants to give you the anointing. He wants to give you everything that he right. asks for. Right. But God is saying, just look up and, and, and talk to me. I want a relationship with you. And in closing, that, that's where I'm going to stop. Uh, praise God, but thank you, Jesus. I appreciate your you listening? Now, I want to know what's going on here. Everybody's being processed, so yes. I want y'all to understand that. And I'm going to be honest with you, you won't find what you're doing. You won't find what you're doing. You won't find what you're doing. They only want to see these people. But how they gonna get season the middle of the middle? Come on, Oh, this is where Oh, wrap it up. Okay. <laughs>
You accepted him as your savior, which means you a disciple. Amen. Which means you've got a responsibility to tell right. people about the goodness That's of right. Jesus Christ yes. and that he is our redeemer. Yes. And he is the bread of life. Yes. You need to be able to explain to somebody that he is the vine and that he is pruning you on. He's pruning you and he's pruning me. Alright? Pastor Bailey had a whole lot of stuff that was rolling out. But I'm going to be honest with you. You don't study the word of God. All right, you y'all. You want to get a catch what she's saying. That's what I said. That's it. That's it. And, and I want to share this with you. She said something really important. I'm going to roll on after this because it ain't got time yet. But let me say this too. The one thing she said, and I hope y'all caught this, don't y'all get tired of going to church? And somebody said, ha! Uh -huh. ha! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we said, oh, we should only preach. And then I got one question for every last one of y'all. Next time somebody said that to me. Ask this, what do you preach about? Tell me what you heard. Come on, Apostle. Because I'm going to share this with you. Did you grow in that moment? Ah, yes. Jesus. Yes. I hope everybody call it. When you go to church, are you growing? All right, now that's the whole thing. That's the whole thing. I need y'all to understand something. In these times, Yes. Some of y'all need to be checking some of these pastors who may be getting some money. Okay. 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 Especially if they say something wrong. How you don't, how you don't need to say something wrong if you ain't reading? Okay. 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 Right now. Yes. This is not an attack on pastors. This is an attack on the sound doctrine of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's what this is about. Y'all yes. hear what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm going to sit on that. Ooh, I got something to tell everybody in here. You know, let me just sit on that. I got a real special treat for y'all. Since I'm moderating this thing, okay. We got somebody, and y'all know how to spell. Y'all know how to spell. Okay, I'm talking to everybody now. See, okay. How many of y'all know how to spell? Okay, how many of y'all don't know how to spell? How many of y'all ain't gonna raise your hand when one question I ask y'all? I'm paying attention. I'm paying attention. Okay. 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 Y'all hear me? Okay. How many y'all know what M I Brooklyn Brooklyn I Brooklyn Brooklyn I Brooklyn I Brooklyn I Brooklyn I How many y'all know what it is? See, first of all, there ain't no letter called Brooklyn. I Brooklyn 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 I Broo
that somebody lying. Because if it was June, June, and Johnny that had me and seen it, then I don't need to go back and open that door to it. That's right. I'm trying to stay safe. So I don't mean that I have to cut off June, June, and Johnny and see them cut off. And guess what it is? I can't wait for it. I can't wait for it.
thou wouldst have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Verse 11. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Verse 12. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Verse 13. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Verse 15. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Verse 16. Jesus saith unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The, the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. Verse 18, For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast is not thy husband, in, the, in that saith thou truly. Amen upon the reading of his word. Thank you, Apostle. Thank you for the word. Now, I don't think it's going to be time. Well, let's just go there. Here it is, this Samaritan woman, you know, like many of us. And saying, oh, no, you don't send the things. Everything nobody sees in the world. Yeah. Jesus, I love this part. Because he offered to give her the living woman. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, I'll say it like this. He sold it so good to her to where he had her ask, okay, well, give me the living woman. Okay. And then he so happy to call her tag. Pull her tag and let her know, okay. I'll give you this one. But first, let go of that sin. Others just call it what it is. Yeah. And first, I need you to stop sleeping with Juju when Juju is not your best. But first, I need you to stop drinking and smoking. I need you to let go of whatever the sin of your choice is. We want God, but we're not willing to let go of the world. How is it that you are supposed to get God for real? How is it? And I, I, I love to tell people this. If I had to get off the word of getting God for real, then guess what? You do too. Because if you didn't allow me to see us sleep around, Lord, I wasn't married to have for the men. No, the man I was sleeping with in my bed. If he didn't allow me to still do drugs and drink and cuss and do everything under the sun that I was doing when I was up the world, but yet I went to a church. I'm going to say this. Mm -hmm. yes. We think Jesus. because we run to a church building. Mm -hmm. On the Sunday, all of you got thirst, whatever day your church building may be. We think that means that we have the heart. My God. We think, okay, you know what? I'm going to praise God today. Uh -huh. But tomorrow, uh -huh. Uh -huh. here we go. <laughs> I got a relationship with God.
I just paid 29. I got him down for real at the age of 25. So I don't want to hear it. Oh, hey, don't come to me up. I don't want to hear that. Mm-hmm. Because if he, I want you to be kind. The same one they call Curtis. If he, if he made me give up doing cocaine, I love it. Oh, yeah. yes, I did. It was yeah. a drug. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't really weed here, but hey, I, I, I was like, you know. If he made me stop drinking, oh, I used to love you, don't Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love the scene I was in. I don't know about y'all, but I love the scene that I was in. If he made me stop fornicating, stealing, lying, cutting, all right. Oh yeah. If he made me give it up in order for me to truly receive him, yes. then you gotta give it up to I love him. Because, like I said, he didn't just come here for no reason. Mm-hmm. Jesus didn't have to go to that way. And he said, you know, this man, mom, could have kept on with the world. He had to, you know what I mean? He didn't have to do that. He didn't have to, I mean, I know some of y'all are not going to be just happy to be here. No, not about to be here. You're here for a reason. Yes. Don't let nobody stop you. From receiving what God has for you to see tonight. Mm-hmm. I don't care who it is. Amen. Don't let nobody stop. Make a sacrifice. Like I say, if they're not bringing you closer to God, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. There is no body that's worth your relationship nor your salvation. There is no body on this earth nor here. I'm the best friend. Just work with salvation. That's right. I like to say there's nobody working on him. Let's just be honest. I don't care how good the sex may feel. Let's be honest. It feels good. Let's be honest. But it's not that good to work with people that go. That's right. Let's be honest. I don't care how good the sex may be. Is it that good in their mama? Oh, yes. But it's not what we want in hell or not. Let it go. Let it go. Because until you let it go, until you bring your baggage, uh, your worldly baggage, okay. all that sin, even the one that you have, even if you're hardest, nobody knows you're doing it. Until you bring that baggage and drop it down in the cross, yes. you will not get God free. That's right. That's you will not get going for real. Amen. Amen. Make your sacrifice. Yes, Lord. I'll say this um, before I go. I know you said it for the end. I'm going to say Even, I got a question before I go. I have not one that I have a question. Sorry. <laughs> 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 That's what that protocol, that's what you're supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't I should have did that. <laughs> <laughs> so what? That's all. I'm going to see you on the glass of fossil. But I, I have a serious question. Okay. I had a, a death in the family three days ago. It was my uncle's. I'm gonna say it's my cousin's mother. Um, and she died from cancer. So my question is, and this is not shooting nothing towards her leader, but this is shooting towards every leader. How is it that we have people stay dying from all these type of demonic spirits? Let's just call them what they are. Yes. Cancer. A demonic spirit. How is it that we have people stay dying? Why are the demons are not challenging these demons? It's the one spirit. Where's the real power of God at? Where's the real power of God at? There's no way we can have no money. Lord, 
congregation that you know how the spirit counsel. Oh, you know they get it with counsel. Even diabetes, her blood pressure, whatever it may be. But yeah. You just let them sit there and then. Praise the Lord. Don't they pay their tithes and offerings? Nothing to say about it. Uh -uh, uh -uh. As long as they pay their tithes and offerings, you don't have nothing to say about it. It shouldn't be. Why are we not challenging these divine spirits? Jesus came, he cast them out. Jesus came, he rebuked them. But yet, today, some reason I get the, the church girl means. Maybe the church don't believe in these no more. Mm. Oh, they real. Yeah. Very real. Yeah. And it shouldn't be. We have people yet steady dying from hell. We have people yet steady dying, period, from okay. these sickness and disease. Mm. But we say we serve the one who did God. Well, who your power is. Mm -hmm. If you truly say you're serving the one true living God, you say you're a man of God, you're supposed to be in the sheep. Oh. Well, you're about it. There's no way. The Lord, you said the Lord put you over some of these people, but yet you let those people die out as if it's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay at all. So I said it to say, if you need something wrong, I don't care what the doctor may have told you. Yes, Lord. I don't care what the doctor may have told you. And I'm talking about the worldly doctor, not Dr. Jesus. I'm talking about the worldly doctor. I don't care what they may have told you or whoever somebody you know of. Oh, well, they started telling you. Don't say somebody else. Oh, they have high blood pressure. They didn't want to put them on pills. Oh, sorry to tell you. Uh, no, we don't say somebody else. Oh, they have cancer. They, they want to stick them on, um, what is it, chemo? Mm -hmm. yes. yep. And they, they go and they take that as if they don't know Jesus. Mm -hmm. My God. As if Jesus done lost his power. Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you. That's why I said, don't let nobody stop Forgetting what God has for you. I don't care what type of sickness it may be. It can even be an ache of pain in your body. I believe in the name of Jesus. He still heals. Still heals. He still heals. It's Dr. Jesus. And I like to talk loud of this word because I'm not going to get it for him. I don't care if it is too loud of the I know you're doing it. Amen. Do you believe it? So I was married to somebody. I'm, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna tell you the truth. I'm gonna tell you what really happened. I heard him and his son was talking how they was going. I had a million dollar insurance policy. Don't ever tell people that you got. Y'all niggas a game. 
I heard them talking about how they was going to spend the money. Told me I got mad. I said, oh, I'm not going to die for it. They're going to spend my money. Yeah, I don't know. But then what is this? I said, that my little son of God, he said, go fight. I put them all out. And anybody that didn't think like I thought, you know what I mean? I said, I don't know what you're doing. They wrote me letters, I'm not kidding. I'm just like, Kelly, you're gonna die, you're gonna die, you're gonna die. I couldn't believe the doctor was right. If you don't come, get this chemo, show me you're gonna die. I said, guess what? Then I guess I'm gonna die in Jesus. I didn't go back. Call me Jesus. It's not terrible. I didn't go back. No, I'm not saying you. You gotta have that life with me. You gotta do this now. Just to you believe, the devil will trust in everything against what you believe. And I need people. I want people. And I trust it. And they would turn it back. So it was just me and Kiss and Jesus. So, 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 don't get it twisted tonight. What she said is real. This is what I've learned. When the Bible comes out, I have to tell y'all, I'm just going to make it to the point. And I was, I was talking about friends. But then nobody was talking about really such a little fun. Because I was listening. Yeah, I learned it. Well, I was listening, sister. Yes. I didn't care who was in class or who was right. But I was listening. Because yeah. I said, what do you want? So I don't play with this thing. I want to know. What am I saying? I'm going to be a town. See, that's what the church is. The church is tripping. The church is tripping. Because we, we, we saw the body. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. yeah. And notice, I don't decorate. I used to, because I don't want you to see how good it was. And, and, and I'm kind of glad it ain't good. Because I don't want you to see how good No, it's not about it. Don't leave it. Don't leave it. Don't leave it. Don't leave it. Oh! 
Uh, if you all have ever heard of the attitude, yes. have y'all ever heard of the attitude? Yes. Okay. okay, I hope y'all have heard of the attitude yes. because if you haven't been studying your Bible, y'all need to know what this is. This is when Jesus was talking to the disciples. Okay, on the mountainside. And one of the things I learned while I was studying is Jesus sat back. Okay, I don't think y'all understand. Jesus sat back. During those times during the Bible, whenever somebody sat down, that was the posture of teaching. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay, I hope so, y'all. Okay, because see, you all need to be teaching what y'all learn at your churches. And by the way, the church is the body of Christ, in case y'all didn't figure that out. Ain't a building. I hope so, y'all. Let me stop. Let me stop. Uh, 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 could you please read the first 11 verses of uh, the attitude? Ma- oh, sorry. Matthew chapter 5, starting at verse 3 through 11. Can you read those from Read of the word in Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 through 11. Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 through 11. Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 through 11. Three. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Four. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Five. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Six, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Seven, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Eight, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Nine, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Ten, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Verse 11. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Amen upon the reading of the word. Praise God. Praise God. Now, I just want to share this with you. This is nothing big. This is nothing. Nothing. Life changes, but if you're reading the word of God, I want y'all to understand something. Jesus Christ is your Savior. That's right, praise God. He died on Calvary's cross. He had nails put in his feet, put in his hands, and he died on a tree as a curse for your sins, my sins, and the sins of the world. All right? I want y'all to understand something. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's right. Right. Yes. Okay? But I need y'all to understand something. When Jesus was doing this teaching, there's a couple of things I want y'all to pick up. And if you don't pick up nothing else from this conference, I want y'all to look at verse 6. Read that again, sister. You know, what's, what's that say? It says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. All of you all of you thirsty. The right. word of God. Right. Every single day. Yes. Every day. Y'all need to be taking the time to read. That's why I started off saying study to show yourself the truth. A workman, he did not be ashamed, rightly, by the word truth. I'm going to share this with all of y'all, and I'm going to use this as an example. I went to a school one day when I'm back at home, and I was at this school, and it was a change of class. And I saw all of these children walking around. And I'm going to be honest with you. I kind of stopped just for a minute. And I just kind of looked and watched. And the thing that I noticed is there was a lot of unruliness. First of all, I understand that they're children. I get that. But the thing is, there was unruliness. There was restlessness. There was, uh, there was, there was a lack of civility or something. Right? And they were pushing on each other and they were trying to get positions. And as I stopped, I kind of looked and I stopped right there and I prayed because something wasn't right. Okay? I want y'all to understand something. When you are a child of God, okay, and when you have been studying the Word of God, God puts His Spirit on you. All right, now. He gives you the gift of discernment. Right then, I knew I needed to pray right then for these kids because I'm looking at the teachers, they look stressed. The kids are running around and pushing on each other. They, there's unruliness. There are spirits that are praying on our children. Oh, 
But my question to you all, you all are praying. That's what I want to say, son. Are you praying? Are you thirsty for God's righteousness? Because I'm going to tell y'all something. When you're studying the word of God, you will know when you pray. Jesus. He will give you the spirit of discernment to pray. Yes. He will allow you all to go down to school and make a difference. Y'all will change the atmosphere. Y'all will just pray. That's right. I got news for you. I hope I ain't got no parents like this up here. I hope y'all ain't going down there because I teach because we're Ray Ray's up there. Ooh, right. 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 When you need to take a risk, I'm sorry, I was saying that. I was saying that. I was saying that. Right. Because sometimes y'all need to be stacking y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Look here, let me explain something to you all. Oh, and I mean this sincerely. Okay? Because I can hear y'all in your teachers. Some of these teachers are stressed. And I got the news for you. We heard Apostle Sean ain't talk about it. We heard Apostle Ben ain't talk about it. Their spirits. Yeah. Right. Some of these folks ain't praying themselves. Yeah. Some of these folks, some of these folks, how many of y'all are praying for the teachers of your children? Yeah. That they be covered by the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. I said, I on snakes and scorpions yeah. and the power of the yeah. yeah. How many of y'all are actually doing that? In these schools for your children, yes. for your children's classmates. Yes. 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 And I, let, let me just ask this. Are there any kids in here that don't teach you? Any of Yes. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. No, raise them high. Right <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason why I'm sharing this with you all. Because I need you all to understand that all four of y'all who have been here. Do you all know that you can make a difference? Seriously, some of your classmates need to hear you talk about Jesus sometimes. Yes. Yes. Some of y'all parents, I hate to say it, some of y'all ain't talking about Jesus. Some of us are not encouraging our kids about Jesus. We, they tried to take it out of schools. Yeah. Well, they have successfully taken it out of schools in terms of being able to talk about Jesus without somebody getting offended. I don't know about y'all, sometimes people need to get it. That's why I say But the thing I need y'all to understand is where else is there for home? Because I want to share something with you that I read in this. I hope y'all will understand this. God says, Bless are the poor in spirit. They is the kingdom of God. I don't know about y'all, but when I read that, some of these kids that I saw that I was praying for, they're poor in spirit. How are they going to be rich in spirit? They know that it's just right. How many of them are going to grow? Yeah, you young, you young people, how many of y'all are not going to tell them, look here, Jesus said. Sometimes that's all you need to say, Jesus said, and know what he said. Okay, you can't just be saying Jesus said, you don't know what he said. That's why you're stuck. Because he is the bread of life. So my thing is, if you know that Jesus is the bread of life, maybe you can speak something into a child that will let them know. Matter of fact, I got one for you. Jesus loves you. Because last I checked, John 3 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Most of us believe in him shall not perish from here in the last night. How many times have y'all said that at school? What was the last time, adults, you said that to somebody you work with? For real. And meant it. Oh, but by the way, parents, adults, what was the last time you loved your neighbor like you loved yourself? Ooh. Ooh. Remember, it's love. Remember, love. Cure it all. That was the word said. Oh, I think that was the word said. But I got news for you. Sometimes, and I hope this is restoration for some of y'all. Some of y'all need to change the way you interact with that coworker who get on your freaking nerves. <laughs> 
Psalm chapter 8. Y'all there? Y'all there? Yes. Say amen. You got it. Yes. All right. Once you read verses 1 through 3, since the low is go. Verse 1. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. 2. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. Stop right there. Read that verse 2 again. Read it slow this time. I want everybody to catch this in the spirit. Catch it. Go. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies. That thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. Stop right there. Let me help y'all out with something. And I hope y'all take this with me. If you got kids, but they're all teenagers. I hope y'all catch this. Okay? If y'all see these children in church with the Nintendo and the cell phone while the preacher is preaching, stop it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because if you read verse 2, it says, out of the mouth of days and sons. I don't think they'll come with that thing. See, you all are protected because your children are learning the word of God. Read it again. Read it one more time. I need y'all to catch this. Read it again. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings has thou ordained strength because of thine enemies that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. Why do you think the enemy after your children? Right, right. Why do you let your kids sleep in church? Mm -hmm. Now, children's church is okay, but I got news for you. Sometimes you need to be sitting right there or she needs to be sitting right there next to you. Because I got news for you. Them kids will catch you before you do something. Why do you think God put it in Psalm 8 too? That right there, I restore a whole lot of stuff Ooh, up in this, this house right yes, here. Yes. And I got news for you. Look, Pookie, Shishi, JJ, Ray Ray, Paul, Bob, and Lisa. Oh, 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 I just want to share this with you. I didn't prepare this, but that's the word of God. Amen. Amen. If I said anything word. that was a lie, then uh, Apostle Shelly can say somebody lied. Yeah. <laughs> but she can't say that <laughs> because God says in John 8 32, he will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Amen. Right. So I hope this will help somebody. Yes. I ain't even gonna deal with Ephesians chapter 4, which I was going to talk about in the verse, but I think y'all got to understand. We need to turn these churches out. Come on. Yeah. 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 And I need y'all to understand something. I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna leave this alone because I want y'all to understand something. Okay? Ephesians chapter 4. And I want y'all to understand Ephesians chapter 4, I think it's verse 11. Okay. All right. If you go back and read Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, one of the things that faith talks about is unity in Christ. Yeah. Because there's a couple things I'm going to share with y'all. I'm going to say that. Because one of the things it says in verse 2, it says, be completely humble and gentle. Yes, bro. Yeah. Be patient, bearing without another yes, in love. Hope y'all understood. I said love. That's why he tells you, love your neighbor like you love yourself. If you don't love yourself, you can't love your neighbor. I got things for you. Some of y'all need to look in the mirror and say, I love you. Thank you, God, for this song. Because you don't believe you can be broken. All of us have gifts. Sometimes y'all need to pray and ask God what your gift is. Y'all follow me? Yeah. And verse 3 tells you make every effort to keep unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Amen. 
Unity in Christ. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is over all, and in all, and in all. But I want y'all to understand something. God shakes things up. Yes, he so I want y'all to notice verse 11. He says, so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. And verse 12, he says, to equip his people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. We got work to do, Yes. We got work to do, people. Yes. And I got news for you. If you hear something in the book that ain't right, go to your pastor, preacher, teacher, whoever it is, and tell them this is what the word of God says. And if they get mad, look at you're going to take it up with the Lord. Amen. 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 Anybody that was standing in line for anointing? 
And I'm going to tell you one thing, and I know you might not believe me, and that's fine. I really don't care. Don't come in my line if you ain't ready for what I got. Okay. I ain't trying to die. And I'm not trying to act arrogant. I'm carrying something yes, that I promise you. If I lay hands on you, it's going to, I, I'm serious. You're going to see some things. You're going to feel some things. I just want to tell you because then, then they call me self pastor. Y'all, y'all, I'm with it. Is it what's wrong? I'm like, asking, are you a witch? I've seen demons. So if your spiritual eyes is not open, they may be open. I'm a prophet. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. If you ain't ready, they're going to come in that line. But if you're ready, come on. Give with God. And, and look, I'm not used to myself, but there's something I carry. There's something I carry. There's something I carry. And some of you, you sick and tired anyway. You know you you, you you tired. You ready for a change. You ready to go to that next level in God. And it's not easy. I promise you. This walk is oh, 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 oh. Woo! It's not easy, my sister. You know you have a good burden. Jesus. I see you. You have the prophetic character. You see that. But, you ready to have that? Because you've been running for so long. You've been Jesus. running for so long. You ain't happy. Because one thing when you have this gift, I tried for about 10 years. I ran straight into a big wall. I almost got killed six times. That last time, I still think of. I don't mind telling my story. My story was, I was a drug addict. I remember God telling me, he said, I want you to stop playing with me. And I was in California. I was in Los Angeles. I was in California. 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 I was in so my aunt called me in Louisiana, my aunt Shirley, she said, I had the dream was my dad. So she was, she was so confused, so I said, she probably had it. <laughs> so then my other friend, first from California, that don't know her, called me the same day, I had a dream with her dad. I was so wanting a drug, come on somebody, I don't like y'all know that story. And so I was like, oh, they all crazy. So I went to these messages, and I was going to score. Now, I was so high, don't know y'all supposed to go in, Supposed to let them come out. I go in with my bad son. And no boys turn off that light. It's four. They turn off the light. I don't know what they The garage started going down. I'm not lying. The garage went down to here, you guys. Do so y'all understand what I'm saying? It went down to here. All I heard was the Holy Ghost say, drop it, bro. I really believe the angel lived up there. There was no way I was supposed to be out of the garage. I remember I rode all over the street. I had my, my pipe and my drugs in the hand. I went on the when I got back to God, I said, what do you want? He said, you. Oh, I, 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 I just I said, show me how to do it. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to stay safe. I don't know how to be what you want me to be. And that's how it starts. God will meet you right over there. Yeah. Yeah. No, first thing is, you couldn't believe me, but it's good for them, you know, what they thought of. But it was okay. I started seeing myself as constant. And that's what I want you to do. This. You've been contacting me a long time. You have to believe me. You are who God said you are. Yes, sir. Da, 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 da. No, I don't care what nobody says. I don't care what nobody thinks. And that was the second time. The first time. I made my, my family sad. Let me tell y'all, the first time I had trust. 4.0 student, nursing student. My mother was an orphan, so I wanted to be an orphan. But I liked the nurse. I mean, she knows. So I was taking this drug for If you don't hear me, they got $25 million in the ground. So the week I was supposed to graduate, I was talking to my friends. I was in mm -hmm. diabetes. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't ready for that. I cried and I cried. And I said, well, I was supposed to get caught. My dad worked for a church. So I was like, I can't get off. Uh-uh. I'm weird. The whole world is what they say. You tell us everything that happened, you can walk free. I said, well, I know you don't work for you. I can't do that. So they cut me in here. Since you're so smart, 
So what I did is I worked with them. I went in chains in Louisiana, 250 schools, talking about drugs and alcohol. And I know 59 people get their GED and they get released. But that's also where I found my mind. I was a cell phone. Cell phone. Oh, oh, oh. And I was actually cussing. I say, how dare you? You got me in here. And I started catching the Holy Ghost. And on shift that night was every devil was a Christian. And so they talked to me. I've been going ever since. Y'all get me. That's my story. That's why the wife can take you from me. Because ain't no man going to tweet. When Jesus touched me, nobody can take me. Was I upset? No. People still say, you have to go be a nurse. I said, I'm a preacher. <laughs> I don't say things like that to just get my stuff look good. There's some of you that go through some stuff and you think you can't get past it. And I'm here to encourage you. I don't care what it is. But first, you got to get past people. Because some of you worried about this one, that one, that one, this one. I don't care what nobody thinks. Only as King Jesus knows my heart. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because that's what's wrong. Everybody looking at the next one. You got to look at Jesus. Because everybody got a sign of you. I don't know. It's not just about prophets and apostles. That's your husband, right? Y'all know you have a ministry? That's what y'all look for. You've been running for a job. You're a child. You're a preacher. I saw you watching. You checking out. You see, she will. You will say you're a And I was like, you just don't know. I saw you watching. I don't mind. You see, when you're real with yourself, you don't care to watch me. And I don't want to blame y'all. Let me tell you something. Don't let nobody do with yourself. And I don't care. Because I have got up out of places that was playing. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> So pray to God, pray to God. Okay, so let's pray over this. I'm gonna let you apostle. I'm gonna be talking. Keep going. Most heavenly Father, we thank you once again for being out of us again. Just a portion of what you do. Your word says that if, if we did not do anything without you. We thank you, we ask that you bless these gifts for the purposes that you've given us. And Lord, we ask that you allow this to be a blessing to the kingdom of God for the building of your kingdom. Lord, allow those people who this ministry will touch to be saved and transformed by the doing of their mind. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. God bless you. All right. Um, so we're going to have this is I call it baby G. This is another one. This is my thing. They all need to be Can I tell y'all what they need to be? <laughs> it's called birthing. Leaders don't do that anymore. I do not understand what God asked them. These people do a lot. If you want to say something, you can't say nothing because they process it. But you know, apostles and prophets got some problems on them, didn't you? <laughs> so, this next person, I love her. I think that she's a mighty woman of God. All these women and men of God, y'all watch out. They got it. No, no, no. They got it for real. And some of you don't understand that they have. But you know. And I'm so serious. Because here's the deal. All of your child up in the apostles and prophets. Don't think I've ever called. Everybody has an assignment. You're always on assignment. I had to learn from always. Always. Let me tell y'all something. Now, this is the key. But when I tell y'all what to do, let me tell y'all how to go. They just let me know. I was listening to something. Now, my cycle was over 200 schools, 29 people. So I'm sitting on the bed, and the oldest person said, They tricked you. I said, What do you mean? <laughs> so I got my shovel. 
a lot of good for the evidence they make a sign. So I called the attorney, I said, you're going to want me out there, won't be. So I promise you, you won't be an attorney. Play with me. That's how I got up in jail. That's all with me. I said, wait a minute, God, huh? what was this about? He said, you were on a sign. Yeah. 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 And one thing about it, I charge you all about the Holy Spirit. You got to answer that question. Whatever it is, don't be afraid to answer it. You don't have to do it like this way or not. Just do what God told you. And you do this. Yes, it's been well, it's been real well. But look at it this way. For the devil is working, for God is working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you understand? Know because you have a big enough, sir. You really do. And you've been running and running and running because you said, well, ah, you know what I'm saying? I gotta get it right. 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 I'm not there too. I don't know what to talk about. I don't know. You'll always be doing and doing. Doing, doing the best you can. Yes. Yeah. I promise you. So I know you guys are going to So, without further ado, Prophetess Lois Bennett. Question, do you know the magnitude of who God is? 
Who is this God who spoke to Moses from a burning bush, yet the bush was not consumed by fire? You have heard of the divine trinity. You know God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Hmm, divine trinity, three in one, yet one spirit saved God. Yes. I remember when I first got saved, I couldn't grasp this concept in my mere human thinking. Three in one, yet one spirit. I often question God about this. Tell me, God, who are you? I mean, in my spirit, I kept hearing God say, one spirit. Each time I questioned him, he would say, one spirit. Point one, God the Father. The most famous biblical description of God revealing himself to mankind was when God commanded Moses to go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. Moses asked God, who shall I say sent me? God said, say, I am that I am sent you. Now the Bible has many names for God, which is good, as each name reveals to us a certain character trait of who God is. This great I am that I am. If you want to learn of God, I encourage you to study the word of God. Yes. The prophet, right? yes. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Pray without ceasing and spend time in the face of God through your daily worship experiences. See, it's about forming a relationship with your Heavenly Father. Honestly, our human mind can't begin to fathom who God is and the true essence of His being. For God is so much greater than that. God is complex, yet He is simple. And in the same token, God is simple, yet He is complex. Now, within the Old Testament days, whenever an angel of the Lord showed up, whomever the angel appeared to, they could not stand in the presence of God, for his glory was too great. When God showed up, they would immediately fall face down to the ground in holy reverence to the deity of who God was. So we know that God is a holy God. Let me clarify this. The one and only true living God, that is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Old Testament had many false gods. They were living under a pharaoh system back then. My favorite biblical name for God is Ancient of Days, which is only mentioned within the book of Daniel. Now Daniel, as you know, was a genuine seer, a man of many visions who also had a powerful gift of dream interpretation. You see, Daniel understood the magnitude of who God is. He understood that before time was, God was and is in all of his infinite wisdom. So this tells me that God is sole creator of all existence. And guess what? God brought everything and everyone into existence by the power of his word. After he created man, he blew his breath of life into his nostrils so that we could live. Because God is, we live. God is also a God of provision. He understood the fallen nature of mankind. Now the book of Ephesians tells us that before God laid down the foundations of heaven and earth, he stored up in the heavenly places an abundance of his mercy and grace to cover all of mankind throughout the generations. This proves his love for us. See, God is the only one who knows the ending before the inception of his beginning. When I say God knows you, believe that, for he is our creator. God said in his word that our best days, on our best days, we appear as filthy rats to him. You see, God is the spirit of truth, and he is a holy God. Yet, we in our human form, we're just made of dust and born of sinful flesh, were we not. You see, God in his infinite wisdom made provision for that too. Glory, hallelujah. Point two, God the Son. John 3.16 states that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And God is also the epitome of love. So who is this carpenter's son called Jesus? The earth is the Lord's and the world and everything in it and all who live in it. For he founded it upon the seas. 
He established it upon the waters. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, and who does not lift up his soul to an idol, nor swear by what is false. He will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God his Father. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your faith, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, ye ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. He is mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, ye ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is he? The king of glory. The Lord Almighty. He is the king of glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, my favorite name for our Lord and Savior is Kingsman Redeemer. Hallelujah. Right over here, you see this right here? This is the cross. Okay? Do not nullify, nullify the work of the cross. Okay? Jesus came in earth, to earth, in sinful flesh. Because he wanted to show us. Okay, that he understood the sinful nature, nature of our flesh, but he gave his life. The Bible says, Hallelujah, glory to God. I'm your friend. I laid down my life for you. Yes, he did. What better friend do you have? You know, when Jesus walked this earth, he lived from the age of birth to the age of 33. Yet and still, he didn't really do his ministry until he was 30, for three years, until his time of death, when he was nailed to this cross. Our kinsman redeemed. He paid a price for each and every one of us in this room. Lord, hallelujah. Do not nullify the work of this cross. Okay, he took on sin. At the time of his death, okay, you know, before he even went to the cross, he said, Father, must I drink this cup? Okay, because he knew it wasn't that he didn't want to do what he was called to do, as we are, because I tried to run, but God wouldn't let me go. The further I ran, okay, he held on tight when I was in the midst of my flesh. You see, the flesh want to do what the flesh want to do. Right. Hallelujah. But he's our kinsman redeemed. The perfect lamb without spot or blemish gave his life, laid it down. He sat down when he was in the garden of Gethsemane. Must I partake of this cup? Must I drink this cup? You know why he breathed his spirit? Not because he knew what was to come. Oh my goodness, how they tortured him. It wasn't none of that. Okay, because he was not a selfish one. Okay, but he understood the sinful nature. So at that moment, okay, that he died, he knew that he was going to take on all of our sins. So he laid his life down and gave it so that we can live. And not only live life, but live a life more abundantly. Yes. Glory to God. I'm coming. Glory. She understands. Okay, I'm going. Okay, do not nullify. Work Point three. God, the Holy Spirit. Okay, the mighty comforter. That's the name I like. Okay, because see, Jesus walked the earth, but he knew what he had to do. He drank that cup. Okay, but he told his disciples before he went, fear not, because I'm going to send one to you. His Holy Spirit. You see, at the point, the moment of our salvation, God calls us his own. In biblical times, okay, if we were adopted, we have the same rights as a natural born son. Okay, you have royal blood coursing through your veins. If you don't, okay, I pray for your salvation. But he said, he told his disciples, I'm going to send someone to you. You see, at that moment, okay, that you say yes, and you recognize Jesus as your Lord and Savior, okay, God owns you. He seals you. The mark of that, you have the things 
woman of his spirit. So Jesus in the heavenly realm, he sits at the right hand of God. Hallelujah. Paid it all for us. He's our advocate in the sky. Yes. But the Holy Spirit is within you. Yes. All yes. the words of the same. Because you know the Bible says under the belly, we're just going to flow. Because you have the indwelling. Pray for that. Not only being sealed by the Spirit, but have the indwelling. Okay, pray daily for wisdom and discernment. Hallelujah. Because he marked you. Hallelujah. Now the title was, if you can remember, it's all in the name. Know your value. When I was growing up in the church that I was raised in, okay, I thought it was so cute. I had the suits. You know, I was working, I was making money, I didn't care. Okay? I mean, I thought I looked the part, and I did. Okay? I was looking the part. What was I really saying? Did I really know him? Get in a relationship with your basics. Okay? So my favorite thing, I had a thing for the Time person to couldn't afford them because they cost thousands of dollars. So I would get the knockoffs, pay $40, 50 I started thinking, what's the difference, you know? Yes, and you know what was said? Okay? Because the name knew Louis Vuitton. Now he seems to be his holy spirit. God has his name upon you. Know your value, you call in the name. Okay, that's what makes you so valuable. God cares about souls, but the kingdoms go forth and spread his gospel. In Jesus' name. Oh, oh, Spirit. Oh, Spirit. I love it. I love it. All right, you guys, this is the point and the time where um, I'm going to be presenting a proper answer. All right, so now we're getting ready. We're almost finished, y'all. Okay, so um, I'm just going to be certain. Prophet Rex is, is a special person. Um, I truly believe there are some people that God has called to a higher level. He's one of them. I'm very serious. This, this man of God is so... I, I, I'm saying it for a reason, because sometimes the package don't come. No, I don't know what I'm it don't come out of your thinking. All right, so... Apostle Sharde Gibor. I charge you by God, the Holy Spirit. This is serious. I know you already know that. Walk in honor, walk in integrity, walk in obedience. Give your best to God. Just like you would give your best to anything else. He deserves your best. You hear what I'm saying? So praise God. Amen. Apostle Christian Connor. But I have to do it the right way, the honor way. Apostle Charlie was already ordained. Now, there's a difference between ordination and licensing. Some people are getting licensed. That means that they could be fall under my license. I would tell you right now, I don't do that unless I know this spirit. Because I will come to your home not going to know what's going on. So she's already ordained, so this is her license. <laughs> so, I'm 
heart to you by God. Continue to walk in obedience, integrity, honor before God. Give him your best. You know, this is a serious thing. I already know your spirit, so I bring you a true woman of God. Continue. God bless you. Woo! <laughs> All right. <laughs> Prophet Rice. Um, this is an ordination. I've never done this before. Ordination and license at the same time. I don't put it in this Praise God. Honor, obedience, give your best to God. Because it, it's not me. If God don't tell me to do it, I'm not doing it. You can ask for good. I got best friends that took the class and they go up, and I was like, it is, it is not like that. Because all I'm saying is that I'm agreeing with God over the city. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. So praise God. Praise God. Prophetess Larissa Mendes. <laughs> praise God, praise God, ordination papers. I pray that you continue to walk in honor, integrity. And I want you to just be more confident. You really are a prophetess. And let me tell you something, you're going to get attacked. Y'all don't understand. This is what I'm going to get, right? That's when you're going to get attacked. The mind, the enemy coming. Then he is drawn to the anointing. So he's coming to challenge you. Oh, oh, you are right? That's not that good talk. So you are right? You have to find out. It's all war. You have some stash of them. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you. <laughs> Prophet is Chainer Moxie.
Though, so I was um, always teach for the crowd. The event certificate does not have a sale. It's not available for the rest. Get them off the internet. Thank you. All right. You know, you don't know why it's playing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 